What if we could not only treat disease but also repair what's broken, replace what's lost, and restore life where it once seemed impossible? Welcome to the remarkable world of regenerative medicine, a field that's rewriting the rules of modern healthcare. From stem cells to gene editing, 3D bioprinting to AI, we're about to explore how science is enabling the body to heal itself. Let's begin at the very roots of regeneration. At the core of regenerative medicine lies the humble, but mighty, stem cell. Stem cells are unlike any other cells in our body. They're essentially the blank slates of biology, capable of becoming skin, muscle, nerve, or even heart tissue. We've got for key types in the spotlight. Embryonic stem cells, or ESCs, are the all-rounders. Pluripotent and powerful, they can become nearly any cell type, but their use does raise ethical questions. Adult stem cells, often found in bone marrow or fat, are more restricted, only transforming into certain types of cells related to their origin. Then there are induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPSCs. These are adult cells, reprogrammed to act like embryonic stem cells. Ethical and versatile, it's a win-win. Lastly, mesenchymal stem cells, the repair workers. These are masters of regenerating bone, cartilage, and fat tissue. They're already being used in promising therapies today. Now that we've met the stars, stem cells, let's explore how they're making a real impact. These aren't far-off theories. Their treatments changing lives as we speak. In 2024, something remarkable happened. The FDA approved the first mesenchymal stem cell therapy for children suffering from a rare condition called graft-versus-host disease GVHD. These children had undergone transplants, but their bodies started rejecting the donor cells. Traditional treatments had failed. This new stem cell therapy? It gave them another chance, real relief where hope had almost run out. Now let's go to China. A 59-year-old man with type 2 diabetes had his blood cells transformed into insulin-producing cells and then transplanted back into his body. In just 11 weeks, he no longer needed insulin injections. Imagine that, a chronic condition managed through cellular transformation. It's not science fiction. It's regenerative medicine. Researchers in Australia are tackling childhood heart failure using lab-grown cardiac tissue patches. These patches, made from stem cells, are designed to integrate seamlessly into damaged heart tissue. Clinical trials are underway, and early results are full of promise, especially for children with congenital defects or chemotherapy-related heart damage. One of the most incredible stories comes from Germany. A seven-year-old boy with junctional epidermolysis bullosa, a life-threatening skin condition, had most of his skin regenerated using his own genetically corrected stem cells. More than 80% of his skin was replaced. Not with bandages, but with fully functioning skin grown in a lab. So, where do we go from here? Stem cells are just the beginning. Let's now explore the supporting cast of technologies that are amplifying regenerative medicine. Gene editing tools like CRISPR, Cas9, let scientists rewrite DNA with stunning precision. In regenerative medicine, this means we can correct faulty genes before the cells are transplanted, giving us a cleaner, safer, more targeted therapy. Imagine editing a cell to remove a genetic disease, then using that same cell to regenerate damaged tissue. That's the kind of future we're building. Now imagine turning those corrected cells into tissues, or even organs, with a printer. That's the promise of 3D bioprinting. By layering living cells and biomaterials, researchers are creating organoids, tiny versions of real organs used to study disease, test drugs, and someday, maybe replace failing organs altogether. This isn't far off science fiction. It's already happening in labs, and it's picking up speed. To keep up with all this, we need more than microscopes. We need AI. By analyzing massive datasets, AI can predict how stem cells behave, what conditions work best, and how to personalize therapies for each patient. It's already helping researchers guide neural stem cell development, a key step in treating brain disorders like Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. Put it all together, gene editing, bioprinting, and AI, 
and you've got a future where regeneration isn't just possible but is precision built, personalized, and powered by collaboration. But do these therapies work in real life? Sometimes the best way to understand science is through the people it impacts. Sarah's life changed in an instant when a spinal cord injury left her paralyzed. Traditional treatments offered little hope until she joined an experimental stem cell therapy trial. Doctors injected stem cells directly into her damaged spinal cord, targeting the injury at its source. What followed was nothing short of remarkable. First came small sensations, then movement. Over time, and with ongoing rehab, Sarah began to walk again. Her story isn't science fiction, it's science in action. A powerful reminder that regenerative medicine isn't just about healing, it's about giving lives a second chance. Regenerative medicine is also making waves in the world of elite performance. Actor Mel Gibson, dealing with shoulder injuries and arthritis, turned to stem cell therapy instead of surgery. The goal? To regenerate damaged tissue and restore mobility. After treatment, he reported a significant improvement, less pain, more movement, and a quicker recovery than expected. His experience reflects a growing trend among athletes and performers who rely on regenerative therapies to bounce back faster and extend their active years. It's recovery, redefined. So, we've seen some incredible breakthroughs, haven't we? But before we get carried away with the promise of regenerative medicine, let's take a moment to look at what might still be standing in the way. First up, ethics. Especially when it comes to embryonic stem cells, the debate is far from settled. For some, the very origin of these cells raises complex moral questions that science alone can't answer. Then comes the regulatory hurdles. While approvals, clinical trials, and safety protocols are essential, they also mean that a promising therapy in the lab could take years to reach patients if it gets there at all. And let's not forget the cost. Many of these treatments are still out of reach for large sections of the population. The technology is moving fast, but accessibility? Not quite as quickly. Finally, there's the unpredictability. How will regenerated tissues behave in the body five or ten years down the line? We don't always know yet and that means continued monitoring, more trials, and a whole lot of patience. So yes, the road is promising, but it's not without bumps. Now that we've considered the hurdles, let's turn our eyes forward. What lies ahead in the world of regenerative medicine? Personalized medicine will become the norm, tailoring therapies to your unique genetic blueprint. Organ regeneration, once a dream, is becoming more real with advancements in organoid growth and bioprinting. Combination therapies, mixing stem cells with gene editing and biomaterials, will drive better outcomes. And global collaboration will be key. Shared knowledge means faster progress, fewer silos, and better lives. As we reach the conclusion, one thing becomes clear, regenerative medicine isn't just a medical breakthrough, it's a shift in what we believe is possible. It's offering hope where there was none, and rewriting the future for conditions once deemed untreatable. But to truly realize its potential, we'll need to move forward with care, balancing innovation with ethics, progress with accessibility. Because in this powerful blend of science and human spirit, we're not just imagining change, we're building it. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more valuable insights on appraisals, revalidation, and interesting topics in healthcare.